From basement band to international stars, to successful entrepreneurs, this is the Glass Tiger of the 21st century. My name is Matt Wells, and I'm going to track them down. I wonder if he's uh, forgot about me while I've been gone. Glass Tiger is now winning over new fans. Flying high. And reaching for the stars, literally. I'm going to finally work on astronomy. How they dealt with the pressure. Years ago, it was painful. And I used to medicate. Their real feelings about each other. He's only got the f***ing guitar in his hand. And hopes for a new album. I just feel we have one more record. <laughs> we hunt down the 80s supergroup and chase the one that got away. Final piece, The Missing Hermit. Say goodbye to that squeaky clean image. It's you in this damn show. This is the glass tiger you don't know. Where are you at, baby? They roared onto the charts with that one unforgettable hit. Don't forget me when I'm gone. It's always been a band that could really kick live. They scored five Junos and a Grammy nomination. Oh, oh, Their rock mullets, catchy hooks, and epic videos ruled the late 80s. And superstars came calling. It was a quick ride to the top that was about to crash. They stopped recording and it seemed that Glass Tiger dropped from the face of the earth. But that was then, and this is now. We have been all over the place with this show. Now, where you at babies in Ontario? Where you at, baby Glass Tiger? And it only seems fitting that we speak to the singer first. The guy's written a book. He's a motivational speaker. I never thought Toronto could be so beautiful. I lived here for a year and a half, and I never realized it until I found Alan Frew's neighborhood. I actually met Alan before. I interviewed him uh, about his book. You know, I've played the game and right. played it hard. I wonder if he's uh, forgot about me while I've been gone. So Come on. Come on. Alan, good to see you. Good to see your house. Yeah, finally. I'm actually going to have a, a wee cup of tea, probably. I don't know where my family went to. Family! I have a very serious question for you, though, especially in the first video. You take my away. There can't possibly be a serious question about the first Don't Forget Me When I'm Gone, so you think you're bullshit? You're not bullshit me, man. How is it? that with all that bad hair and that, that band, how is it you didn't have the mullet, you didn't have the rock mullet, you had the nice, the short, kind of 80s yuppie hair, and the rest of these guys had the horrible hair. How did you manage to find these guys and still fit in? Because they had it bad. Uh, I have no answer for that. So what do you do, what do, you do then? You wrote a book, right? Yeah. You, um, you, 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 like, you go and you speak, your motivational speaker too? There's a lot of stuff I do in terms of public speaking. Success on your own terms. I like people. I like to communicate with them. I think he's probably enjoying the motivational speaking more than Glass Tiger. So I traveled Canada back and forth again, uh, but this time as a public speaker. That kept me very, very busy. Kept me away from my family a fair bit. So when I get home, uh, my idea of Perfect bliss is, you know, my wife and daughter and I snuggled on that couch. A month ago, we um, we set the band up over here. Yeah. And uh, we had about 100 friends came over and uh, and Glass Tiger rocked out. And the high highlight of the evening, I'm told, is when my baby daughter took the stage. And... You should have seen the man and the Unlike his daughter, Alan suffered from severe performance anxiety. How long did it take you to get over the stage fright? You had stage fright in the early beginning, like bad stage right. fright. Years ago, it was painful, and I used to medicate. I used to carry a, a, a doctor's bag, and I had everything in it. What was in it? <laughs> Uppers, there'd be downers, there'd be, there'd be a little bit of hashish. I sort of legally medicated. It was some pills my doctor had given me, for the, for supposedly for a nervous stomach. And I still get very... Uh, you know, I still get kind of uh, that nervous. Really? See, now I feel I'm at my best when I'm at m almost my most fearful, you know? Alan was candid about everything from his past drug use to his painful childhood. Mine was tough and um, came from a very violent 
uh, religiously segregated and divided, alcohol-fueled, you know, existence. It's no coincidence that my father got laid off and and with, with little or no money, we, we, we came over here. My greatest success story ever is, the, is that little boy getting his arse out of there. So I leave, I After tea with Alan, we're off to meet Sam Reed in a parking lot. Sam said to meet him here because we're going to carpool it to his business trip in Ottawa. I don't know, maybe his wife's letting him have the minivan for the day or something. I don't know. But he's not here yet. I guess they didn't take the minivan. This can't be him. There's someone waving at me. This is not what we're going to Ottawa in. Dude, that's Sam. Hey, Matt, how are you doing, man? <laughs> Welcome to the Tiger Bus. Dude, this is just ridiculous. It's like a hotel is the washer and dryer. Like, I've been on tour buses, yeah. but this is, this is ridiculous, for dirt pits, man. Why do you even need a tour bus like this? Like, how, what are you doing? Half a dozen shows? Yeah, I mean, half a dozen, but we want to travel in style. This is even good enough for Fru? Yes, this, yeah. uh, this, this meets his uh, standards. Fru. You know, he's very high maintenance. Apparently, the way to get inspired to write about flying is by hopping on a 56-year-old plane. And that's exactly what Sam's about to do. I do a lot of writing for different things, and every once in a while you get a gem. This project, I've got to come up with some music that fits the mood of celebrating 100th anniversary of Powered Flight in Canada. It's high adrenaline, so i got to come up with something uh, high energy that these, these guys are going to fly to. What are we doing here? What well, are you doing? Well, you needed some motivation to write this music, so we came to the right place. It's Vintage Wings Canada. It doesn't get any better than this. Sam's excitement is about to really take off. He's headed to a flight briefing with billionaire pilot and vintage plane collector, Mike Potter. <laughs> this, is, this is beginner school. <laughs> well, I'm going to roll the airplane to vertical. You're going to see the world okay, go 90 Saturdays. degrees. Disorienting fact of the world going around. We can do a simple loop. Progress that into a full it's barrel roll until we're upside down. The top of the we're 90 degrees from the entry. This is me tucking my air sickness, ba sickness bag into my pocket. I'm a little nervous about it. Hey, you cut that out, mister. It's you in this damn show. Oh my God. We got the rare privilege of viewing the most amazing collection of vintage planes ever. Helmet, check. Air sickness bag, check. It it's getting more serious, so it's kind of like, I just wish we discussed less and just did it. <laughs> Mike's invited Sam to ride along in his favorite vintage 1952 Harvard. Make sure you come down uh, with a song written. That's all I'm saying. That's the sound of Sam shitting himself. Sam flies high, and Wayne launches us into space. I'm more well-known worldwide from astronomy than I am from music. But the real drama unfolds when the original drummer comes out of hiding. You're the other guy. Final piece. After meeting Alan, there can't possibly be a serious question. We checked out Sam's tour bus. It's like a hotel. Sam's about to take flight and maybe get inspired to write a song. completely inspired now. Are you inspired? I know what music I need to come up with. <laughs> the only problem is now I want to be a pilot. 
Oh, I'm on ground. <laughs> nice work. Where's the puke? There you go. Oh, proof. I made, proof. I made it. <laughs> oh. Back to business. Sam opens the door to the original Glass Tiger studio. This is the boathouse. Whoa. It's an exclusive recording session with Alan Connolly, lead guitarist. Al Connolly is our Keith Richards. He's always got that guitar in his hand. He wakes up in the morning with his guitar in his hand, and he goes to bed at night with his guitar in his hand. Yo. What's up, man? How are you? The Glass Tiger guy who's still has a musical instrument in his hand. This is great because all the other Glass Tiger guys seem to be doing, well, I guess, no, Sam's got music happening, but like contemporary music. Yeah. You're the, you're the only guy really like hanging on to that. Well, contemporary, I guess, and uh, more world beat too. Yeah. I like a lot of different styles, Caribbean, Mediterranean. That kind of feel. There's also other elements in my life that I work with, you know. Um, I work a lot with uh, kids uh, in my life, with special needs kids oh, and really? things like that. And on the side of, that's another side of me. Wow. And uh, I've been doing that for a good 10 years. And the kids are great too. There's a lot from it that you get back as well. Three Tigers down, one to go. We're about to meet bassist Wayne Parker. Wayne Parker's here, the most typical looking 80s bass player, not even his house, it's a client of his because Wayne sells and makes some kind of observatory machine for astronomers. Look at me, I'm world. Wayne. Hey Matt. How are you man? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, bro, what's going on? You're Sprace Brainiac? Sprace Brainiac? <laughs> yeah, that's me, that's me, yeah. I don't know much, I'm just like, you know, Wayne created some kind of yeah. space thing and stole it to NASA. Yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, when the band used to play, uh, I carried a telescope with me everywhere. He had gas, you know, gear acquisition syndrome <laughs> when it came to astronomy gear. If our schedules had allowed, we would have been uh, background Ferengis in Star Trek. When the band took a break, I got into astronomy big time. I started building observatories. This one we built uh, uh, just here in, in North Toronto for a friend of mine, and he's, uh, he's a famous uh, astronomer and astrophotographer. I needed an observatory in my backyard when I moved here, and I looked around and saw this thing called a sky shed. And Wayne showed up one day and built my sky shed, and I didn't know that Wayne was this famous rock star. You can't tell that there's a, an observatory here uh, with a big telescope in it, you see? This is cool. This is called a sky shed. Get it? <laughs> ah. and, and then we called our, our new one, our, uh, our little dome, we called it Pod for Personal Observatory Dome. I and mean, you can sit out here all night with the remotes now and just go from just galaxy to nebula. To, it's incredible. What happened was in about 91, 92 when the band decided, ah, new, you know, we, we all wanted to go our separate ways for a while and work on other projects. I didn't want to uh, be involved in music. So now I thought, well, great, if everybody else is taking a break to work on music, I'm going to finally work on astronomy. So I make affordable observatories. I'm more well known worldwide from astronomy than I am from music, certainly. Come on. Oh, yeah. Really? Like, like, guys write me, <laughs> like, fan, let's say. You can't quite fan, though, but, <laughs> but they'll say, like, you're famous in, you know, San Paolo, you know, whatever. And they're talking about astronomy. And then they hear I'm in a band, and they go, oh, I must check that out. We met the guys separately, and in a Where You At Baby first, the band comes together. I just feel we have one more record. <laughs> they chat about being pinup boys. I've got my little hard hat on. A possible new album. I just feel we have one more record. And the one who got away. That's when he really starts to say, I want out of this. I love the band too much, to be honest. I just felt like, uh, this is it. Alan shared stories about how he dealt with his nerves. Years ago, it was painful and I used to medicate. Sam overcame his fears. I made it. Wayne showed us the heavens. From galaxy to nebula. And Michael's about to bring us back to Earth. I have a hard time believing that there's any more than what you just told me. All right, so I've talked to everybody in Glass Tiger, except this original drummer that they kind of mentioned, but no one ever really talks about. Michael, uh, we wish him all the best and stuff. He's out doing his own thing. But for us, we got right back to our roots, and I don't think we'd ever go back to being a five-man band again. This is where he lives. It's the other guy, the original drummer. Hey. 
Hey, Michael hey. Hansen. How's it going, Matt? You're the other guy. Nice to see you, yep. Final piece, The Missing Hermit. I kind of hear about you, but I don't hear about you. <laughs> so what do you do? As a producer, I've been working with young acts, uh, writing songs and uh, producing them, uh, you know, to get them into the business. It is not the end you come so I hear you're a hockey guy, too. I have a, a team uh, called the Simcor Sting. Uh, Mississauga Men's League, so I go out and get beat up every Wednesday night. Yeah, I think we should go hit the ice, maybe, and see what's out there if you want to, you know, take that chance. I'm always up for a challenge. I just hope Michael is, too. I'm about to cross-check in the teeth. <laughs> That's how we play in Newfoundland. Before we discussed leaving Glass Tiger, I had to know how it all began. When Alan and I first got together and formed the band, uh, what happened was is we we had to decide on one singer. But singing and playing drums from behind the kit, right? It's not, not an easy task, that's for sure. We had to make a decision, and uh, I had to take the seat behind the drums. If the drummer has the biggest ego and he's in the background, you're going to have a problem. I needed to know when the tensions began. We were just, you know, running out of steam as a unit uh, in regards to my relationship to the guys. Um, and uh, I just wanted to be, I wanted to be with my son. I wanted to raise him properly, you know, and it's pretty hard to do when you're in Europe and the States all the time. And, a little bit of the wind was coming out of the Glass Tiger sails at that point, too. Right now, uh, uh, where I'm sitting, all I have is good memories, to be honest. It's, it's, uh, it's fine, and uh, they, they go on, do their thing, and they do their reunion stuff, and uh, I'm happy doing what I do. His answers totally left me hanging. Oh, you chasing, Matt? Was he fired or did he quit? Is there still bad blood? I start. needed an answer. I have a hard time believing that there's any more than what you just told me about Glass Tiger. I don't believe it. I believe in friendships, especially old friendships. Right. And when old friendships fall apart, then it gets even tougher to come back together again. And I think if you want to answer the question, that answers the question, as nicely as, as I can say it. Yeah. Friendships fall apart. Which nope. is total, total political answer. Right. Nobody, nobody's fault. It just happens. For different people, Yeah. that's it. All right, so I met everybody in Glass Tiger, and now Sam has invited me back to his house to look through some old Glass Tiger stuff. Hear that? Dude, they're playing. come together you can kind of see you guys you can see that you're a band talk about the time when it when, when things started to come down and music was changing and the industry was changing and, and you knew like okay well I guess this is not going to be the same as it was before the first disaster happened when I broke my leg and had to show up in a full length yes. cast and that should have been a metaphor for the for the tour Michael Hansen that's when he really starts to say I want out of this. Yeah. I, and I am rooming with Michael at the time, and uh, we're clashing a lot. I think I was bringing them down as much as they were bringing me down. And then Michael says he's quitting the band. I love the band too much, to be honest. I just felt like, uh, this is it. And we say at the time, well, we've already had our meeting. You're out of the band. <laughs> Glass Tiger is very much like a family. It's like going on a trip with your four brothers. And as much as you love your brothers, there's a tendency to um, fight with your brothers. How easy was it for you to c come into this mix of these guys who've been playing together, you know, for, since, I don't know, 1980 or before, right? I was working with Sam anyway on just miscellaneous side projects. I was already playing with Alan in his solo band. It was easy. The easiest transition ever. Some nights he's back there and we could be falling apart on stage, like miss a part or whatever. We just look back to Chris and he's like, deadlocked. Cheers! Here's a great story. Sam and I go down and do an interview with the Toronto Sun. So <laughs> we go down and this is one of those classic moments where we say, okay, now we're going to stay true here no matter what they say. <laughs> we're not going to be sunshine boys. <laughs> None of that shit. We're going to be, right, right, we go in. We give them an interview and the next day in the Toronto Sun, 
There's the sunshine, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and I've got my little hard hat on. <laughs> and we're on a ladder. And we were the sunshine and we boys. We specifically said, we're not sunshine <laughs> boys, are we? And they went, no, 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 no. Does anybody have the desire to like do a new Glass Tiger record? Are you, are you all past that? There's um, some. <laughs> <laughs> We just, we just can't get it together. <laughs> <laughs> no. You want a bad. I just, no, I just, I just feel we have one more record. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't say that. He <laughs> didn't say that for 10 years. <laughs> and as a not, like, I'm not giving up yet. I'm not giving up yet. <laughs> Let's just say we believe in quality, if not. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, of all the Where You At baby shoots so far, this one's been the craziest because we had the whole band and they all have things happening that are so interesting that you could do a whole show on their own. In fact, I had so much fun, I'm getting back on the bus. Where You At, baby?